Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario RPG. The last time we started off the game and now we're in our good old friendly area of Mushroom Kingdom. Though it's not the entire world in this game like it has been in some previous Mario games. In this case, it's only a town. Uh, obviously it's completely populated by toads. However, there's not much we really have to do right now. I'm talking to some people for the most part. But that's just to show these people that might be either important later for something or that will come into play a bit later in this part for something else. What am I standing in? Oh, you! Hey, did you see a crocodile around here? He talks like a mobster wannabe. I'm sure he's up to no good. Hey, wait a second! My wallet's gone! Now, there are three major buildings of note in Mushroom Kingdom. However, we want to enter this place first. Because these toads live here. Say, hey, Mario, guess what? Rainy isn't just a friend anymore. We're getting married! Do you know what? Did, did you have no good wedding chapel? No, I do not. No, oh, and there's also this hyperactive kid running around. We. Oh, oh, oh. This game's actually full of little physical humor things like that. And I have to admit, it's cute. Hello, to shopkeep. Mario, what a pleasant surprise! One of Frog Fuchs's grandchildren is running errands in town today. I haven't seen them though. Oh, you heard the shop? What are you on? I do have purchases to make, but not now. Hey. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Get off of there this minute. <laughs> Sorry. By the way, let's head downstairs. Hello, random old man. I order you to stand before me. I now order you to jump. In this world, there are things called hidden treasures. Use your awesome jumping ability to look for them. So yeah, like usual Mario games, there are hidden coin blocks that contain things. However, in this case, there's actually another one in this exact same room with another flower in it that you need to jump off the toad himself to get. I'm getting as many of those as I know about. There might be a few that I don't know about, which is just unfortunately a product of the thing, but yeah. Either way, here's the inn, which is what inns usually do, a, a HP and FP restoration. It only costs three coins too, but uh, don't need to use it because Mario's house is quite literally a hop, a skip, and a jump away from this place. Later on in the game, when moving through the world map might be a bit more time consuming, I'll be using inns, but in this early section, it's not worth it. That horrible crocodile. No wedding crocodile skin shoes, no less. As he no shame. We never know what that person looks like. Mario, there you are. I'll tell the Chancellor you're here. I'll leave you down the hallway. Jump on Toad's head now. And then jump up here. We get a green coin, which is known as a frog coin. More on that later, but if you don't get that now, you can never get it in the game again. So that's one treasure you've permanently missed out on. Princess hasn't returned yet. Can you imagine how the Chancellor must feel? I guess. Hey, what's over here? Found peaches. Ooh. Hey there, what do you think you're doing? I'll give you this in exchange. Just leave everything where it was. Notable in the Japanese version, that item is known as peaches XXX, which uh, leads me to believe it's probably her underwear. But, uh, oh well, let's just ignore that. Got a mushroom out of it, at least. I'm guarding the treasure room. Sorry, but you'll have to get the Chancellor's permission to pass. Okay. And what's in here? The vault guard better not be goofing off while I'm cleaning this other room. Okay then. And that's all we can do in the other corridors of Peach's castle, so let's take a look in the throne room. Sir, Mario has arrived! Hello, Chancellor. Mario, thank goodness you're here! We heard an explosion or something at Bowser's Keep. It was so loud I almost dropped my spores! Um, excuse me. Where's the princess? She departed for your house hours ago. I feel the worst. Could Bowser somehow be behind all of this? Spores alive! You're telling us that Bowser has abducted the princess again? Never mind. It'll be up to you to enter the keep and rescue Princess Peach. Yeah, about that. How did you do all of that? Egad, the keepers are unsaleable? What awful powers at work here? Mario, her life is in your hands. Please, save our dear princess. 
gonna do that. Mario. Right. I almost forgot. This may not help you, but why don't you take it along? And we got a map. All right, cool. Now we Mario. Got... Stop doing that. Forgive me, but I can't stop worrying about the princess. Go to the cellar and prepare for your journey. The vault guard shall assist you. All right, now we can actually enter the vault, and trust me, it is worth doing. Mario, the Chancellor has filled me in. Come, let me show you around. And we got three chests down here. The center one we got? A flower. This is a flower. The more you gather, the more flower points you'll have in battle. Find them. I told you that much last part. This is a coin. Small, worth, small ones are worth one, and large ones are worth ten. This one's a ten. That's actually new information. This mushroom will restore your hit points and flower points. Unfortunately, mushrooms you find on its items will only restore your HP, so beware. As I went over last part. And if you talk to him, he'll actually tell you more about the FP system, but more or less, as I've said before, it's just MP under a different name and with more of a limited quantity. Come back here! Ah, a cutscene. You must be the cr- What the hell are you? Come back here! Ah, oh, come on, you can do it. Give it a leap. You can die. Oh, that's sad. Oh no, that reptile stole my grandpa's coin! <laughs> I can't cry. Big boys don't cry. But it's just not fair. What am I gonna do? Ah! Oh, that's conveniently time to rain. Yeah, let's go check if this guy's alright. Yes? Gee, you're soaking wet, aren't you? I'm alright now. Sorry. There's nothing like a good cry. But why was I crying? There was some reason. You're kidding me. My grandpa asked me to buy some things for him here. When I walked into town, that croc stopped me. Oh yeah, he took it from me! He stole my coin! I chased him, but he's way too fast. Mario, let's see how you're gonna take care of Bowser. Like that? Wow, he doesn't stand a chance. Wow, you're THE Mario? I know all about you. You got more jump in you than a box of frogs. I'm Mallow from Tadpole Pond. I'm a frog, but can you believe it? I can't jump. Embarrassing, huh? How about it, Mario? Will you help me catch that filthy thief? Uh, I don't see why not. The young frog Mallow, who doesn't look at all like a frog, joins Mario in his quest. And that's our second party member. More about him in a moment. Mario, I have something to report, sir. I saw him. He's here somewhere. He just zoomed past me a second ago. Did you see him? Did he look something like this? Why, yes, exactly. He's the one who took my coin. Why didn't you stop him? Because I forgot my bazooka at home. Sheesh, give me a break here. Come back here! Haha, <laughs> you smugs will never catch me! A snail can outrun you morons! Later! Oh, there he is! It was. That's him! Hurry, Mario, let's get him! And I would do that, however, now that we actually have a second party member, I'm actually going to buy the things here at the shop. Hey, Milo, what kept you? I'm starting to worry. Wait until you hear this. You see. Wait, I've already heard, old frog just told me. He seems to know everything. Hold on. Listen! The truth of the matter is, well, um, the coin was stolen. What? Well, if that's the case, I can't, I guess we can't trade. What a shame, huh? Oh, but there's no need to worry. Mario here will help us out. Is that so? Well, if Mario's on your team, you'll have that coin back in a jiffy. Not so fast. Take this with you. You'll probably need it. And we get a pick-me-up, which is essentially a phoenix down. And now that I actually have Mal on my team, I'm going to buy the equipment I want to buy here. Uh, there's some items here we haven't gotten yet, like for instance, there's the Able Juice, but we'll see that later. I want to buy the shirt, the pants, the jump shoes, and the antidote, and essentially one of every equipment piece, though I actually needed to go back and grind for money in a mushroom way. For the most part, uh, this armor is very vanilla, it just increases your stats, at least when it comes to the actual armor. 
the jump shoes doesn't increase your jumps damage, aside from maybe up upping the stats a little bit. It actually makes it so you can jump on enemies who are uh, immune to it or strong against it. Whereas the antidote pin, I mostly am putting on Mallow for the stats because you can't get poison coming up. But if you could, uh, the antidote pin prevents the poison status. There he is! He probably stashed it in that bag! Let's nab him! Are you trying to tell me? Go on home to mommy before you get hurt, kid. And there he goes. Uh, notable, there is a save point right here at the start of the area, so if you want to use it, you can. And even though we've seen spikies before, I'm going to show this battle off just so I can talk about some things. First off, the timing for getting the timed hit with the hammer is right at the apex of the hammer itself swing. And for Mallow's physical attack, it's more or less the same as Mario's standard physical attack when the first fist makes contact, I believe. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be a unique case because I haven't recorded the rest of the game yet, but this is how I'm going to attempt to show off all the timed hits is talking about them in a battle, even if it's a repeat battle. And Mario reached level 3, which means that we not only get to talk about something a bit more in detail, but I also get to talk about his new technique, Fire Orb. We'll show that off in the boss fight of this area. Now, last part I mentioned, there's kind of a rotation to them because I chose uh, the magic up for Mario in particular. Essentially, the way you should look at it is if it's on a multiple of three, if your level is multiple of three, rather, you're like, you should choose power because that usually gets the highest boost. If it's three plus one, HP gets the highest boost, and or three minus one, magic gets the highest boost. That's what I'm going to be following for basically every character in the game, so keep that in mind. And speaking of other characters, Mallow joined our party, of course, and he's basically the game's black mage in a lot of ways. His stats are very magic focused, even lower power and HP, I believe. You couldn't jump to save your life, kid, so I guess this is goodbye. Cool. And the only magic attack he has right now is Thunderbolt, which is a lightning elemental spell, so now we can actually talk about uh, some more weaknesses when we get to them. But its uh, attack timing is when you use it, thunder uh, lightning bolts will strike the ground. You need to press the Y button there. Either way, we got two new enemies here. K9 there in the center, which has 30 HP, uh, two experience, no coins, can use can drop a once again flower, which I think is one of the rarest ones. And it's doesn't really it doesn't really have any weaknesses. Frogog, on the other hand, has 80 HP, four coins, three experience, can drop an HP max flower, or a mushroom even. And it's weak against not only fire, but thunder. So we actually have both of its weaknesses, though jump is the way you want to go about it if you're going to use a magic spell at this point. Uh, because uh, the weird thing about Mario is he's kind of like Robo from Chrono Trigger in a way in that a lot of his abilities are magic focused because uh, that's what jump is considered one as is fire orb obviously and Mallow learned HP rain at level three which is your first healing spell uh, I don't use it this part uh, because at this point really uh, there are other ways to heal that are just better and it's more efficient but uh, that'll be used eventually and then I'll talk about its timing then Uh, notable, uh, canine enemies like that actually like to spawn a lot. And, like, sort of infinite spawning stuff or grinding stuff. Oh, you're a persistent bugger. But I'm a million miles ahead of you. My accent for you is inconsistent as all hell. Either way, we got a Kiro Kiro Kolo there a moment ago. And if I recall correctly, that's essentially an elixir. It says it only recovers all your HP, but it recovers your MP as well, if I recall. Uh, FP, if I recall. And there's a recovery room. The game was also very good about giving you recovery rooms early in the game, so HP rain is only really useful in boss fights. What are you doing? Ah, uh, give it up already! That treasure box is tented, but now's not the time. Now, we saw some of these platforms earlier. These are basically your main platforming gimmicks for the game. You can use them to traverse places. And we get a star in that treasure box, which actually makes us invincible. We can destroy enemies like this. And even though it doesn't appear like it because I don't kill enough of them quickly enough or I'm already a bit higher level than I usually am, you do get experience points for any enemy you defeat while you're in a star. Uh, invincibility phase, rather. I ended up getting into a battle anyway there, so it might look like I didn't, but no, that's actually how it works. And there's actually a star abuse you can use, where if you use a save point in an area, use the star that comes up to it, and then die? Uh, your death- death in this game isn't that big of a punishment. If you choose to continue, you're essentially back- sent back to save points. But you, in a lot of cases, you do keep the experience points you got, so you can just grind off of stars for a while. 
Until at least it doesn't become efficient anymore. Dead end! You won't give up. I'll just have to hide! I'm not gonna do the star abuse because I think that's a cheap way to grind. He's gone into hiding. Let's see if we can sneak up behind him and catch him. And you do need to sneak up behind him. By the way, that chest up there is a recovery room. I try not to fight too many enemies in here. Essentially, in this area, Croco is running all over the place. Ha! Your eyes are much faster than your feet. At this rate, it'll take you 10,000... Uh, 100 more years to catch me. Whoops. Uh, he's running all over the place between those four or five different little pills. And you need to sneak up behind him. He kind of fidgets back and forth in what direction he looks at, so you just need to do that. Ha! Your eyes are much faster than your feet. At this rate, it'll take you 50 more years to catch me. Do this three times, and you're good. Though, you can also accidentally get into a boss fight. And this is where I'm going to talk about flowers for a second. Because I get a Lucky. Lucky is a particular flower that I'll talk about in a moment. But essentially, anytime you defeat an enemy, I, I'm not sure if it has to be with a uh, timed hit or not. I think it does. There's a chance they can drop their specific flower type. Like, for instance, Frog Augs drop HP Max, as I brought up earlier. There are five types of these flowers, and each have a specific benefit. HP Max is self-explanatory. Attack and defense up raise those specific stats by 50%. Once again is an interesting one because it gives a character essentially a second turn. And Lucky, as we're about to see, gives you a little mini game that can double either your coins or experience points. You win big or you lose it all. You select the win, uh, try it out, and you basically have to choose wherever Yoshi went. I think you can follow whichever egg it is, but it's a dangerous thing because either you double it, you lose it all, or you just keep it because that's what a tie does. A tie lets you keep everything you would have lost. What's this? You fool's gonna chase down a pumpkin. Well, excuse me, princess. Luckies are worth it sometimes, but other times not so much. It all depends on where you are in the game. You again? This is getting old. It'll still take you... Enough, you got me fair and square. I'll give you back your coin. Whoa, did you really believe me? I was lying! This surprises no one. Croco is our next boss fight. 320 HP weak to fire, so use fire orb, or fire ball. Uh, the time hit for this is just to mash the Y button. And when you do that, he actually loses a turn because you have to douse his tail, his, eh, his tail fire. Uh, 10 coins, 16 experience points. And the thing is about this fight is that he hurts. Uh, he has one particular attack, which is basically his magic spell known as Weird Mushroom, where he heals himself for about 60 HP. That's the biggest annoyance in this fight, aside from, honestly, some really high damage output at this point in the game. It's actually kind of scary. Uh, his tackle attack in particular can do, I think, around 15 damage, which is kind of dangerous. Throwing the bombs also hurts, but thankfully he's just using his Weird Mushroom here. Uh, depending on how much FP you have, the tra the strategy can change here. Uh, personally speaking, I recommend only using, uh, if you're, like, below 20. Just use Mario's Fire Orb until you run at low, and then use Jump, and then just physically attack from there. But if you have enough, you can also use Mal's Thunderstorm ability just to get some extra damage in. Fire Orb is the better way to go in this case, though. God, Malice physical attack is kind of pathetic, though. Mind you, he also doesn't have a weapon, and he can get some good weapons later on, admittedly. But uh, he's most certainly a Black Mage-type character. You'll know this fight is over because it has a bit of a semi-different ending when Mallow jumps on his own like that. Give me back my coin, or I'll belt ya again. Ouch! I'm gonna pay you back in spades, kid. Go on. Take back your grubby old coin. Adios, amigos. All right. We got it back. And that's the end of that fight. We also get a flower tab for winning, which is all nice and dandy. And also, Mallow reached level four. Uh, essentially, even though he didn't get the level ups to start because he starts at level two, uh, he's following the same pattern as Mario with level ups. Yeah, we did it. We got Grandpa's coin back. I can finish my errand now. Hey, look at this. That Croco guy left a wallet. Huh. Did someone ask about one of those? I'm going back to the shop in Mushroom Kingdom. Are you coming? Might as well. And that's a nice little mechanic of Mario RPG. A lot of dungeons end with a uh, teleportation spring like that. That, if they don't inject you entirely, they'll just send you back to the first room of an area. 
which is very good for backtracking sake. At least in terms of- Whoa, that's not right. Uh, hello, how are you doing? Next new enemy, for some reason, all of a sudden, is the Shyster. 30 HP. Uh, two coins, three experience points. HP max flower can drop a honey syrup as well. And their main thing is they have a drain spell, which is a very low damage fire elemental spell. Also, if you want to block against the physical attacks, uh, the timing for defense is right before they make contact with you. Thanks, Mario. I'll continue to stay and watch, but now everyone seems suspicious. By the way, look what I found. And you get 10 coins. You get little rewards for rescuing all the people in town, more or less. That was too darn close. Thanks for the hand, Mario. Hey, that's the wallet that the crocodile swiped with me. Can I have it back? Sure. Thank you so much. Here, I'll give you this as a reward. Go on now, take it. And you get a flower tab. Uh, you can also sell that wallet for coin. However, not only do you get a flower tab for doing this now, but you'll get another item later on in the game. Yeah, she's right. I guess we can put it off until things cool down around here. I found the perfect place for a wedding, but now we're all stuck inside. You don't need to fight all the shysters in the area. Uh, like the ones especially dropping down the main hall. They're just kind of there. However, the ones in the houses often will give you items, like this one in particular. Thanks, Mario. What about my son upstairs? Oh, I forgot all about him. Irresponsible father. I do, kid. Boing, boing, boing. Now this guy can jump. Well, you're little. That's my thing. Really, thank you so much for everything. Here's a little token of my appreciation. And we get another flower tab. Uh, notable with flower tabs. Later on in the game, I tend to keep a buffer of two to three flower tabs at a time for quick FP recovery. Uh, that doesn't matter too much at this point, though. Uh, however, come, like, after the third major boss, maybe, if even, uh, that's where that's gonna come really to play, but until then, just keep them around. Now that was really scary. Everyone's hiding in the princess's bedroom. I and some others couldn't escape in time. I hope no one got hurt. Well, that sucks. Uh, you can head into the sub-passageways, and I'm gonna be doing that. However, I wanted to head into these areas to take care of the other fights. And, uh, also level up bonus goes to, uh, magic as usual. Well, not as usual, but for the multiple of three minus one. And there's one thing I like about this game, by the way, with the battles, is that no matter where they are in the game, they actually come across as being very quick bat fights. Uh, later on in the game, they obviously do get longer just because things get more intricate, but even then, compared to, like, Final Fantasy games, they're pretty short. Oh, the vault card screwed this guy over. Well, isn't that just great? And you know what? You can actually go talk to him. Let's do that. Hey, dude. Never mind that. Guess what I found? It's a gold coin. A gold coin! And it's all mine. Oh, I found this in the cellar. Here, you can have it. And we get a wake-up pin, which I'm going to put on Mal. Not only are the stats of it better than the antidote pin, but even though they're not really a threat yet, the statuses that it prevents you against are much more appropriate for Mallow because it prevents the sleep status effect as well as mute. Also, the vault restocked for some reason, so that's another 1 FP for you, as well as 10 coins, which is admittedly at this point nothing to be laughed at. I'm just scared to pass by them. Okay, then I'll take care of them. Save it, Mario, again. How can I ever thank you enough? Strange moonwalk there. Oh, really? Not so fast, pal. Look at him. Can't even bounce. Hey, maybe we can bounce on his head. Say by Mario again. How can I ever thank you enough? And everyone's here. You're in one piece. Thanks to Mario, of course. Say by Mario again. How can I ever thank you enough? Oh, no. The Chancellor's still in the throne room. What? That's terrible. Well, if Mario around, we're safe, right? You bet. There we go now! Hey, wait! Hang on for a sec, okay? Please, take this! The princess would have been happy to know you have something of hers. And we get a flower tab. So that's pretty worth it. Plus, in the case you want to grind off the shysters coming out of the throne room area, uh, the chancellor, or the caretaker rather, acts as a an HP and FP restoration center. So another free in, basically. And there's also a staple here, which I do recommend using, because we're coming up on the first major boss fight. Also, I cut back to the throne room area. What do you think everyone win? Well, gang, looks like we have ourselves a new home. We can bounce around all day long. There's no one here who can stand in our way. Yahoo! Let's bounce the night away. Well, aren't they excited? And fun fact, I'm not going to do it here, but there's a way you can actually carefully jump over the shysters to get to the Chancellor in the top left corner of this room. 
and doing so will actually skip the next boss fight in total. Not so fast, pal. Look at him, can't even bounce. Hey, maybe we can bounce on his head. Oh, you're pretty big. Ah. Listen up, gang. These guys are gonna put a stop to our party. Are we happy about this? You're asking for it. Oh, you're gonna get it. You picked the wrong people to not to bounce with, bub. How about a flat leap to go with that ugly mustache? All right. First major boss fight of the game is Mac and his four shysters. Uh, starting off, I actually, my first turn's almost always the same in this fight. Physical attack with Mario, then timed hit with the Thunderbolt attack with Mallow to kill all the shysters and leave Mac on his own. And that also stuns Mac, so free attack with, uh, free turn with no attack going towards you. Mac has 480 HP, 20 coins, 30, uh, 24 experience, and he's weak to thunder. However, in this fight, honestly, your best bet is to use jump or fire orb, just due to its higher damage potential at this point. He only has two attacks, which are a standard flame attack, but not too far away from drain, actually, and flame wall, the attack you saw there, which is basically flame, uh, the main fire attack just on everyone. However, it has very low damage. Notable, though, in the virtual console versions of the game, uh, the graphic for flame wall was changed, or at least dimmed. Uh, in terms of his only other attack, really, the big thing you have to fear with Mac is that eventually he'll cause the shysters to respawn. And you do have to kill them again. However, it's often he'll just spawn another group right afterwards. Because what he's trying to do at that point in the fight is kind of do a Dragoon-like jump from the Final Fantasy series. He'll jump up in the air. He'll never... I don't think he'll ever try and land on you. However, while they're here, uh, while that group of shysters is still on the screen, rather, he won't come down from the jump. So... Essentially becomes a minor bit of a mook rush. Thankfully, though, Thunderbolt still takes care of them in quick enough time. As you can see, though, he's very stubborn about getting them in. It's just best to focus your attacks on Mac in this fight because you're just wasting FP if you focus entirely on the Shysters at first. And he's down. However, this is one of those games where you actually have to destroy all the enemies on the screen for the battle to end. So, uh, not as climactic way to end a fight through killing Shysters. Also notable, it's going to say 12 experience points in the thing. That's because if I'm recalling correctly, the experience points are actually split in this game. What the hell is that thing? Well, whatever it is, it's called a star piece, apparently, and there's at least seven of them. This is not good. This is not good. The mustachioed one is strong. Strong, yes. We must warn the boss. Come on. And that won't come back to bite us. Hey, Chancellor, how you doing? Gracious. Oh, it's you, Mario. What a relief. Once again, Mario to the rescue. But who were those? Chancellor! Sir, thank goodness you're all right. Mario, so it was you who got us through all of this. We owe much to you. And all is good again. Well, except for the whole princess thing, isn't it? <laughs> First the princess and now this. It's just too much to bear. Mario! How about we go ask my grandpa for help? He knows everything. Excuse me, buds. Who are you? Oh, hello. My name is Mallow. I'm from Tadpole Pond. Well, any friend of Mario's is welcome here in Mushroom Kingdom. As I was saying, Mario, you are our only hope. Mario, please, you must rescue the princess now. Mario, I'm in your debt too. Let's head over to Grandpa's place in Tadpole Pond. He can help. Wait, why did I even come to Mushroom Kingdom in the first place? Eh, I guess I'll find out soon enough. Could Mac, the sword-like monster who crashed into Mushroom Kingdom, have anything to do with the star piece that Mario found? Our heroes move on towards the Kero sewers. 
And that's the end of more or less the first major arc of the game, so to say. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part three, we'll be heading off towards those Karo sewers after fulfilling something that Mallow clearly forgot about despite being the entire reason we met him. See you guys then.